Welcome back to the channel. I am really glad you're here because today I want to talk about a big project that we've been doing here for the past couple of weeks. If you've been following the channel, you'll know that I've been talking about this septic system that needs to be replaced here on the property. Now, the current septic system is 65 years old and it is well past time uh, to upgrade this system. It's just something we've had to do. Now, the system, as I sit here today, has just really wrapped up and is complete. But I've been recording footage throughout the past week and a half or so so that I can share that with you. And I was thinking, how am I going to share this? How am I going to put this together to make it make sense? So what I came up with is that I'm just going to sit here now. I'm going to go through all the steps that we followed to get to this point, And I'll cut in some of that footage from along the way. Welcome to my cluttered garage. You know I'm really glad you're here. The first thing for this process, and this has been going on now for over a year for us, uh, but the first thing that we had to do was to get engineered drawings, uh, plans for a septic system. Now we're in southern New Jersey, and I'm sure every state has different regulations and, and different codes for the installation of septic systems. So I'm going to talk about what we've had to do here. First thing is to get engineered drawings. So what that meant was getting a land engineer out here they had to dig test pits because you have to find sand on your property so that the drain field works properly we happen to live in an area that is filled with a tremendous amount of clay they dug three or four test pits here and it wasn't until the fourth try that they hit sand the other pits they went like 17 feet deep and hit nothing but solid clay so uh, if it wasn't for the ability to find sand we would have had gone with a special uh, advanced treatment system but the fact that we found sand up on the corner of the property we're able to put the septic bed there and avoid the uh, very costly advanced treatment system one of the other things we had to also have done is a property survey you have to have a property survey so that you know where you're putting your system is within the bounds of your property lines and setback and all that as well. So we had to get the property survey done, which was not a big deal. And then we had to get the engineered plans created, which is also not a big deal once we found the area where we could place everything. Now the next step after that, once you have your plans from the engineer, is you take them to the county and you pay for a permit. The county reviews the plans. Uh, if they accept the plans, then you get the stamp of approval. Uh, you get copies of the plans back and then you can start your uh, search for a contractor to put the system in. Now, with the pandemic, uh, with so many things, contractors were just backed up. Uh, I had a few contractors who just, they all returned my calls, but some of them just said, we're so booked out, we can't even look at this project at this point. Uh, I had a couple other contractors who uh, replied very quickly. They came out, they gave me a quote, uh, and I was really impressed with them. Now what I did was I, I researched, there's nothing better than a recommendation. So I talked to plumbers that I know, electricians, other contractors, and asked them who they knew in the industry. So I ended up choosing a person who is uh, pretty well known in the community. Uh, his father started the business and now he and his brother also operate their own separate septic businesses. They get along just fine because I actually called both brothers. The one was too busy. I called the other one and I said, hey, just so you know, I already called your brother. And he said, that's okay. We share jobs, no big deal. Uh, two separate businesses, but they, they uh, work together, so to speak. So, uh, good reputation. Uh, I did get multiple prices and they were all very close to uh, each other. So that made me feel good that uh, uh, I, won't, I don't want to say I was getting a good deal because this is an expensive system. I know some are less, some are more, but uh, expensive for us, and I can talk about that a little bit later on as well. So we chose our contractor. He brought this machine in. So the first step for him was to dig out this septic bed, and it is big. It's up on a hill, which means we have to pump up to it. He dug down, uh, I believe it was nine feet at the deep end, uh, seven feet at the shallow end. It's really just like a pool, a nine feet to seven feet, it's like 21 feet wide, 41 feet long, uh, and uh, just a, a big old hole. Of course, with that machine, he knocked it out in less than two hours, and I was really impressed. 
Boy, Sam does not waste time. I don't think he's been here an hour, and it looks like he's got this hole pretty much dug, and it's uh, like 20 by 40 feet. He's going seven feet deep uh, at one end, nine feet deep at the other end because it's on a hill, but uh, he does not mess around. Is that all the digging you got for today, or you got more to do? Is that? Well, that's done. That's it. That's it. That's I, it. I don't, that wasn't even two hours. No, it don't take me long. <laughs> I got Big Bertha there. Big, big Bertha. Bertha. Big Bertha, get it done. <laughs> save yeah. on save on fuel, right? Go as fast as you can. Yeah, right. But I wasn't really going fast. Just, I mean, that that thing gonna hog out some. That dirt. wasn't fast. No, no, that wasn't fast. Jeez. That wasn't fast at all. Man, good stuff. Okay. Right. And the tank's still coming today? Yeah, the tank's supposed to be here. It said 3 o'clock. And that's a 1,000 gallon Two of concrete them. tank. Two, Two of them, yes. Are they 1,000 each? Yes. Mm -hmm. Jeez. All right. Yep. We'll watch for them. We'll watch for them. Okay. Okay. So after the bed was dug, he had to wait for the county inspector to come out and make sure it was deep enough, wide enough, uh, no problems there. And they give the green light to backfill it with sand. Now there's a particular sand that they have to use, and he brought in like 18 to 20 triaxles of sand. I forget how many tons it was, but you can imagine filling a 20 by 40 hole nine feet deep with sand. So he backfilled it with sand, and then uh, there is 18 inches of stone on top of that sand, and that is the initial area where the uh, liquids leach into that bed. So you can see the kind of stone they use is a pretty big round stone and what that does is it lets the liquid leach through the stone and into the sand. So since this is a raised septic bed it's up on the hill which is kind of nice because it it levels out with the hill. So what Sam did yesterday was he just feathered out the dirt all around the uh, bed of sand and it blends in really well with the hill so I think this was a great choice. I don't like the fact that we have to have extra components by pumping up to it but it's better than having a big old mound in the front yard. Today, he's got a lot planned. He is going to set the two tanks. Uh, he's got the stone coming for this. He said he's gonna try to accomplish a lot today, so it's gonna be a busy day. So we've got the stone all in the bed here now, and now he's gotta spread the stone out. They've got PVC pipes here that are going to be laid out and that acts as like a uh, manifold to distribute the liquids that come up and get pumped into the bed. Can you tell me why we have two tanks? I know one is the tank for the, the waste coming out of the house. Yes. So why do we have a second tank? Other one's for dosing. It has a pump that goes inside and pump it to the bed. It's so, a dosing, dosing tank. So the one tank comes out of the house. That's for the septic. That's the septic. And then the, the liquid waste 
right, overflows the, into, into the, the dosing, dosing tank. tank. And the dosing tank, the water pumps it over into the field bed, disposal field. Yeah, but it's got to be another thousand gallon tank, right? It's, yeah, 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 yep. So we didn't have the, if we didn't have to have the pump going up the hill, we only need one tank. You only need one tank. Everything be gravity fed. Is there is there a distribution box for this kind of setup? No, not for this kind of not the type of um, fuel drain you have. You got a pressure dose system. Okay. A pressure dose. So it's gonna pump it up and then kind of yeah, force it out evenly along. Right, right. All the waste from the house goes into this thousand gallon tank. Now, normally, if you have a, a gravity fed septic system. The overflow from that tank, which is liquids only because the solids fall to the bottom, it's designed in a way with baffles and whatnot so that solids uh, can't get out. They have to fall to the bottom and then only liquids can come out of the top. So in a gravity system, those liquids would just come out of the top and they would work their way into the gravity system through a distribution box and whatnot. But remember I said that our bed had to go up on top of the hill. So we have to have a second tank, it's exactly like the first tank, Second tank is called a dosing tank. And what that does is the overflow from the septic tank, liquid overflow goes into this dosing tank, another thousand gallons. And then the liquid from that dosing tank gets pumped up to septic system. But again, the first step is setting these tanks. They had to be leveled, they had to be perfect. The dosing tank is a little bit lower, I believe, than the septic tank. Maybe it's the same height, I don't know. But that's the next step. So he dug out for the tank and now he's just dropping some loose soil in there so they can use that to level out the bottom. I gotta say, Sam is impossible to keep up with. I mean, I'm just running around with a camera and I can't keep up. I'm out of breath because he's one place and he's another place. He jumped in the truck, get the truck unstuck. And now he's digging this second hole, which is only going to take about 10 minutes at the most. But uh, the man does not stop. Now once those septic tanks are set, the two tanks are tied together with a four inch sewer line. And then the dosing tank is plumbed with a two inch line that goes from the dosing tank up to the bed. And that's what pumps the liquid up to the bed. Now tank number one, which is for the solid waste, uh, is here. And then the liquids overflow from tank one to tank two. There's a small particulate filter that goes in tank number two uh, so that basically everything in here is liquid. There'll be a pump inside this tank and through a two inch line that liquid will be pumped up the hill to the bed. Show me that the uh, pump there with the with the two switches. The the one on the bottom is a float, so yeah, that triggers one, the pump, right? Yeah, one on the bottom is the switch. It turns the pump on. The one at the top is an alarm. If the pump happened to malfunction or something that happened, this high alarm float goes off, and it'll send a signal off to the alarm box, which can be located which can be located in your basement. Okay. So that is this is sound off. It's this pump happened to malfunction. To let you know that you're not pumping. Yes. I asked Sam why the dosing tank 
is a thousand gallons. Like, are we pumping a thousand gallons of water up to that septic bed? But he said, no, basically that will pump about 200 gallons up to the bed each shot. So I guess the idea there is that you have extra capacity in that tank. So if you lose your pump, power failure, mechanical issue, you've got lots of extra capacity uh, to give you time to fix that pump before the tank fills up to the top. So apparently 200 gallons or so will get pumped from that tank up to the bed. I don't know how often that pump will run. Obviously it's going to be based on your water usage, but uh, it seems like a pretty good system. Now once the pump is hooked up, the inspector comes back. Uh, Sam dumped in two or three hundred gallons of, of clean water uh, into that dosing tank. Uh, they hooked up the pump and the inspector stood at the top of the hill and they waited to hear the air and the water come out of that line for the first time. You hear air. Yeah, hissing and crackling. I hear it. Or your caps aren't blowing off the end there. No. It's not puddling up. Looks good. All right, back to the tanks. The way that that system works, it's a pressurized system, meaning that there's a series of pipes that are buried in that first six inches, eight inches of stone. They're one and a quarter inches, they're capped at the ends, and there are quarter inch holes in the bottom of those pipes. So it's basically like a giant shower head. The pump pumps the water up to this series of pipes, they're pressurized, and basically it injects that water downward into the bed. Now once the system is functioning and approved by the inspector, that's when you can tie in the house to the new tank. And that's actually a pretty simple process because the old tank stays right where it is. You don't have to remove that from the ground. It's buried, it's out of the way. What you do have to do is you have to start by pumping out the old tank. So you pump out the old tank and then you backfill it and it's just abandoned and underground. To connect the old tank or the old system to the new tank, they just simply cut the four inch line coming out of the house. They put a Y in it uh, or an angle and they bring it into the new tank. And within 20 minutes, you've got running water, flushing water, and you're good to go. After the final inspection by the county, we're basically done. And what's left is finished grading. You might notice that this looks a little slower than the normal SAM pace of operating his equipment. That's because this left track has a big split in one side and it's getting ready to tear and fall off if he pushes it too much. So he's taking it easy. Got the finished grading happening on the front yard now. Covering everything up. Well, here's one unfortunate casualty of the project. Looking at this track, you can see the the basically basically these are like sprocket holes in the track, and you can see that they ripped right through. So the drive gear is coming through and now this just, just, just spins on the inside. It's awful, a lot of contrast here with the bright lights, so it's hard to see, but <clears throat> got this track is down. Well, with the broken track loader, he had to pull out the backup. Doing the old New Holland with the box blade. He said he's got backups for backups. really pleased with the contract that we chose because he graded off the hill very nicely, did a great job with bringing in uh, sand and gravel and topsoil, spread the topsoil around and then he went around and he uh, planted grass seed uh, and just did a really nice job with all the finished grading. Now after that finished grading is complete, the last step, the final step is to write that big fat check for the balance of the project. And now this project 
cost about $25,000. And again, those were the prices that I got from various contractors. They were all pretty even. So about $25,000 for this project, which initially I thought was a lot of money, and it is, that's not easy. But when you see the amount of work that was done and the equipment that was used, it's not that bad. I mean, honestly, if I did a project like this, I think I'd want at least that much myself. So after the check is written, just flush and repeat. Lucky for us, lucky for me, this is the last septic system that this property will ever see in my lifetime because it should be good to go for another, who knows, 50, 60 years. So I hope you found this video informative. If you enjoyed it, please click the like button. If you've not yet subscribed to the channel, I invite you to join us and I look forward to seeing you next time.